in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching tonight we're going to pray but then what I'm about to share with you tonight, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will never forget it for the rest of your life. I pray that you will add it to the archives of the mysteries of the kingdom that you will use to wrought righteousness in this life. In the name of Jesus, I remain committed to sharing with us the truths of the word of God that make men that lift men that empower men and when these truths come it's important that our hearts receive them receive them receive them are we together you can listen but it does not mean you are receiving you can hear you can even take notes there are two notes there is the tablet on your hand and there is a tablet of your heart says do not let them depart from you keep them in the midst of your heart they are life to those who find them and health to your flesh hallelujah psalms 106 verse 4 koinonia is a place where every time we gather it's not only an encounter with the holy spirit it's a feast of light the mysteries of the kingdom the principles by which the saints command victory in their lives and in their territories we're going to read two verses together and then i'll just establish a few things and we will pray psalms 106 and verse 4 please let's read together if you can see it one to read remember me O lord with the favor that thou bearest unto thy people O visit me with thy salvation scripture number two isaiah 49 from verse 14 to 16. isaiah 49 let's read together one to read but zion said the lord hath forsaken me and my lord hath forgotten me 15. can a woman forget her suckling child that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb yea they may forget yet i will not forget you 16 behold i have graven thee upon the palms of my hands thy walls are continually before me help us holy spirit the book of remembrance write it down i want to share with you a very powerful and spiritual mystery very deep spiritual mystery the book of remembrance oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh Let your kingdom let your will be done. Yahweh, 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 Yahweh. Let your kingdom come. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Let your will.
more time. Yahweh. Oh, yeah. yeah. Please be seated. Apostle John was banished on account of the testimony of Christ. Please sit down. And whilst John was in heaven, he had access to many, many truths about the operation of heaven. John was told to write a letter to the seven churches in the then Asia Minor, which were a typology of the complete church, admonishing them across different lines of the spirit walk. Then John had access to the throne room where he saw the worship of the Father and the worship of the Lamb. Then John had access to the things that will happen thereafter. He began to see the end of times and the desolation that would come upon the nations. Then when we get to chapter 20, John is given the privilege again to go to the throne room. And he's watching and John testifies that there are books in heaven. And books were opened. The book of life was only one of the books. This is John's record. And we know that his record is true. John said he saw that there were books in heaven. That those books had many functions. And that those books were for earth. There were things that happened in the earth. That were captured in those books. One of those books. Is what I want to share with you what it represents in the lives of the saints is called the book of remembrance hmm. the book of remembrance memory is a very deep spiritual mystery please look at me memory is an advantage that god gave man it is because of the power of memory that you are able to remember it is because of the power of memory that you are able to preserve knowledge are we together now it will be impossible to advance in science and so on and so forth if you lack memory memory is a system of retention is god's intelligence given to man an ability to retain things because god is not only a giver he's a keeper but I know whom I have believed. Follow me tonight. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed. So God has many systems of keeping things. There is a system that keeps the prayers of the saints. The Bible says the prayers of the saints arise like incense. And they are collected in a vial and stored. He is able to keep. Hallelujah. And that one of the things that can be kept in heaven is the activities of the saints in the earth. And that there is a book called the book of remembrance. Now, the book of remembrance to a carnal man would suggest that God forgets. The book of remembrance is not necessarily supposed to remind God as though he forgot. No. No. The book of remembrance is one of the ways that God administers justice in heaven. Please understand this. In the judiciary, some of you who are lawyers and are legal practitioners, you have a very thorough knowledge of the constitution. However, there is a manual, a compendium of all of the policies that should govern the activities of men within a defined territory. And when you are in the law court, I pray that God will open your eyes tonight. When you are in the law court, you not only need your memory, you need the books. The books that archive and represent the basis of your advocacy. 
the judge himself before he would pass a declaration no matter how experienced he will make reference to the books and consult with the things that are written there please listen very carefully and as he consults with the things that are written there he would be able to come up with certain verdicts there are people who look guilty until the book bails them out there are people who look innocent until the book proves otherwise and then we see that there is a book of remembrance the activities of men in the earth the bible clearly lets us know that there is the all-seeing eye of god now if you studied fine arts you would have learned something called perspective is that true that means that a viewpoint you can stand from an angle and they will ask you to capture every information you can find paint it draw it let it be represented are we together now the same applies for technical drawing and anything that has to do with construction you are taught to be able to capture realities and images and information from different angles now so when i am here now i cannot clearly see overflow one i almost totally cannot see overflow three i cannot see our online people and so when we talk about the ability to see it's difficult for us to understand how god sees because we think that god uses his eyes to see the realm that god dwells in listen very carefully the realm itself is an eye the bible says listen carefully that god dwells in unapproachable light that he's full of light and in him there is no darkness no shadow of turning no variableness are we together now so that everything that surrounds god everything emanates light and so there is no possibility of darkness i hope you know that darkness also means the absence of information the absence of truth so that from the realm of god it is impossible for any activity to happen within a sphere that is under the jurisdiction of his creation that he cannot see are we together now the concept of sight we only know it based on what physics would teach us or medicine and and all of that but you have to look at sight as a product of light if the bible says there is no iota of darkness that means there is no absence of information there is absolutely nothing upon the face of the earth that the all-seeing eye of god the creator cannot see now this is very powerful because there are things that you would wish a man saw so that you would be able to advocate for you for instance the injustice that happens in our world are we together now people can be oppressed and use their earthly influence to manipulate injustice to become justice but the bible records that while all of that is happening in the earth the all-seeing eye of god is there a system of vindication that what men cannot vindicate you on there is still hope are we together now please follow me very carefully so we're discussing books here god sees all things god knows all things god is everywhere this is the unique attribute of god that he did not share with man it is what qualifies god to be in a class of himself god gave man any other thing gave him his image gave him dominion gave him the holy spirit but god did not give man omnipresence god did not give man omniscience god did not give man omnipotence these exclusive dimensions are reserved in god's class man does not know all things 
man cannot be everywhere are we together now this is very powerful so the Bible records that every once in a while God would seem to show up in the earth and then begin to backdate certain things whether for good or for evil that there is a system by which God can go back in time and begin to deal with an issue that you may think has been long forgotten and that there is also a system where God can go back in time and begin to reward the saints for certain things now please understand what I'm telling you then the Bible comes to the earth realm and begins to teach that men can forget are we together now scripture is scattered with this possibility that the best of us can forget your memory card can crash is that true your laptop can crash there's something in medicine called brain damage i don't know what it is but i i have an idea that whatever it is it represents a state where your brain for some reason may not coordinate at the frequency it was supposed to there are people who have gone into coma is that true and they came back and could not identify their wives their husbands is that true they didn't even know themselves they didn't know how to walk again how to talk again now i hope you know that if memory is not a possibility you will not be able to walk you will not anything you did now you will not remember again so that memory is an advantage you can archive yesterday and use the information for today i don't have to learn to walk again i learned it once it's been recorded it's been stored anytime i need to walk i use the mystery of remembrance are we together now listen very carefully i don't have to learn alphabets a to z again i did that many years ago but because of this power the ability of retention through memory and the ability to call the past into your present not everything in your past is bad i can call that knowledge and use it today is that true if i raise a song now that you used to sing when you were small it's amazing how effortless you will still sing it remember you did not rehearse but for the power of remembrance but as as flawless as men are they still forget they can forget i can give you a promise come show i can give you a promise meet me tomorrow and i'll give you one thousand naira and excite you you may remember but i may forget whether for health reasons demonic manipulation or just whatever it is and you come to me making a demand and i say no 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 i cannot remember and i rob you an opportunity to enjoy this blessing simply because i forgot there are people who are not employed today because their help has forgot they forgot where they kept their cvs are we together now there are three stories in the bible that are very interesting they are testaments of the mystery of remembrance and how the saints can tap into this as one of the mysteries that cause them to command dominion and very quickly we are going to look at it remember this is a prayer meeting story number one genesis chapter 41 i'll run through the story very quickly the bible tells us that joseph when you begin to read from chapter 39 then chapter 40 the Bible lets us know that Joseph now from Potiphar's house on account of an accusation remember what relocated him was an accusation Potiphar's wife lied that he raped her and then they relocated him to a dungeon a prison and left him there and then the Bible says one morning that Joseph watch this Joseph noticed the countenance there were many other people in the prison but two were worthy of note the buckler and the wine presser the bible says they all used to serve the king and for whatsoever reason they annoyed him 
and he threw them into the dungeon and so they were there with joseph and then the bible records that joseph on seeing them he called for their attention and then they communicated dreams they had heard and joseph said tell me the dream and i'll help you let's see what can happen and then the butler brought his own dream and then the wine presser started first and the interpretation of his dream was in three days the king the pharaoh of egypt will call you out of the dungeon and you will be restored back to the palace where you will serve the butler was impressed at this news and said i also dreamt and he said okay tell me your own dream i was holding three baskets upon my head full of bread he said and suddenly the ravens came and ate of the bread and joseph said oh dear this is what it means in three days you will also go out of here but the only issue is that when you are out of here you will be hung and the birds will eat your flesh so he was done and then he quickly told the wine presser please when you go to pharaoh do not forget remember me tell pharaoh now that you are with me in the prison we don't lie in the prison there's no point lying you are already there prison is where they tell the truth a lie is told so you will not go there but once you are there you see that so at least we've been able to discuss as co-prisoners you know the truth now please go to pharaoh and use the opportunity you have and tell him that there is a man who is who has been unjustly accused and whose destiny has been unjustly tied i can imagine the one presser say no problem god bless you when i go back the first thing i will do is to tell i must make reference to the person who prophesied to me it's amazing how good things can make you forget where you came from and can make you forget that you need to help others too this is man for you are we together now i i can imagine them hugging themselves loving themselves blessing themselves and saying look i'm not sure you'll stay more than one week in this prison again now that i'm out by evening just imagine in the prison that we're discussing your issue and joseph will say thank you but the bible i love the bible the bible says that when he was reinstated it noted that the man forgot joseph joseph remained in the prison for two years because one man's memory went bad please understand the implication of this not because his skill went down not because god was no longer with him the memory of his helper could no longer capture the need to help him and the man was there full of grace full of gifts full of potentials full of prophecy full of dreams but at the mercy of one man's memory are we together now then the bible says when god was now ready to remember by himself genesis 41 let's start from there I've saved the long reading of chapter 39 and 40. Genesis 41. Let's start from verse 1. And it came to pass at the end of what? Two full years. Take note of that information. Two full years. That Pharaoh dreamed. And behold, he stood by a river. Verse 2. And behold, there came up out of this this and that and that jump to verse 9 let's save time verse 9 now remember let me just save us the stress he gathered everybody the sorcerers and everyone and said i have dreamed a dream that has troubled me the pharaoh speaking now and he attempted to get those who would interpret for him and they could not interpret and then the bible says verse 9 then spake the chief butler unto pharaoh saying i do remember i do remember my faults this day next verse pharaoh was wrought with his servants 
and put me in word in the captain of the guard's house both me and the chief baker and we dreamed a dream in one night i and he and we dream each man according to the interpretation of his dream read on and there was with us a young man was he not supposed to say this earlier but because he could not remember two full years were added to a man's experience and now by the mercy of god look how effortless he's remembering everything that means the information was still in his memory something stopped it from coming to light follow me please it does not look like this man forgot the story so why could he not remember look how articulate he is in stating everything remember his brother was now two years old in the grave he had died and he still remembered everything he says there was this young man an hebrew servant to the captain of the guard and we told him and he interpreted to us our dreams to each man according to his dream did he interpret 3 13 and it came to pass as he interpreted to us so it was me he restored unto mine office and him he hanged 14 hallelujah 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 the power of remembrance then only after remembrance then pharaoh sent and called joseph and they brought him hastily hastily that means speed was a possibility in his life but just because the memory of the benevolence what he did could not be remembered this man remained in the dungeon and he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto pharaoh now when you begin to read the remaining parts after interpreting the dream at that moment joseph is reinstated and not only reinstated promoted to get to a point where he became the prime minister of egypt and pharaoh made a declaration that only in the throne would joseph be lower than him now remember that everything in scripture is a type of christ and the church are we together number two everything in scripture is prophecy the bible says the things that were written are for time they are for our learning so that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope are we together now yes so joseph is put on that throne and then they bring him an egyptian wife are we together now the daughter of potiphar the bible says the priest of own and she became his wife and they too became the rulers of egypt and under their leadership egypt began to thrive and excel even in the times of famine now notice everyone who came to buy grain to survive only did that because one man remembered look at the miracles that were associated with remembrance the reinstating of a man the fulfillment of a prophecy the saving of a nation and the then world from famine for seven years were at the mercy of one man's memory everybody say the book of remembrance if one man's memory can produce that kind of boomerang effect one man just remembering and the king fetches him from a dungeon and he becomes a representation of God's purposes within his day then it means there is something we need to know about the power of remembrance number two in Isaiah chapter 38 please give it to us verse 1 the Bible talks about a man called Hezekiah are we together now in those days verse 1 please look up hezekiah was sick unto death everybody say unto death that means that something was about to end in his life and the bible says isaiah the prophet the son of amos came unto him and said thus saith the lord now when god is speaking and and i hope you know that isaiah was not a fake prophet isaiah was a genuine prophet thus saith the lord set your house in order 
For thou shalt die and not live. Who is speaking? God is speaking through a mouthpiece called Isaiah and saying, Hezekiah, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but you are not going to recover. You will die. And Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto the Lord. Let's see the contents of Hezekiah's prayer. Ready? And he said, everybody, remember now. Remember when? I remember my wrong this day. That's what the butler said. Remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee. How I have walked before you. Go to the archives and check. God of heaven, I know there is a verdict upon me now, but I place a demand on the mystery of remembrance. Remember that you are a just God. Righteousness and justice are the foundations. I'm, I've become a lawyer at the point of death. I need to plead a case and I'm using the remembrance. He says, I have walked before you in truth and with a perfect heart and I have done that which is good in your sight. Is it not written that if they obey and serve me, they will spend their years in prosperity? Is that true? Now, Isaiah is bringing before God. He's saying, Lord, I know you are God, but something is wrong with this verdict. I know that you can remember there are archives, testaments of my uprightness before you. And I bring it before you. And I plead, although you are God, remember. Next verse. Then the word of the Lord came to Isaiah again. So the Bible is showing us how God remembers. Now watch this. He's praying. Remember the content of his prayer. Remember. The Bible is showing us how God remembers. That when God remembers a thing or a person, this is how he acts. Verse 4 again, please. Let's go back to verse 4 so that we we'll understand what we are doing. Then the word of the Lord came to Isaiah saying, next verse. Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard your prayer of remembrance. I have seen your tears. Behold, I will add to thy days 15 years. Verse 6. And I will deliver thee and this city out of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city. And then you will read on, he used the sun as a sign to go back 15 degrees. So that he would know the certainty of the things that were spoken. Everybody say remembrance. If you knew Isaiah and Isaiah died, you say, oh dear. I mean Hezekiah. Hezekiah, you have gone. But Hezekiah refused to die. And Hezekiah used remembrance to insist that oh God remember I have walked uprightly before you and the Bible says God remembered he turned his situation around the last story is a prayer meeting <laughs> story story once upon a time there was a king called Ahasuerus and that king the Bible records that he was Lord over 127 provinces then the Bible lets us know that he was married to a woman called Vashti and that the king would usually as they did in those days flaunt their glory including their wives are we together and it was time to bring Vashti to the scene and Vashti refused and I hope you know that what Vashti did was not really it was an offense but it was not that bad it was because she was in a position that she had the power to influence other women if the king Ahasuerus was not a king an ordinary man the suggestion would be counseling counsel them and say that's all right you are not the first just make sure you don't act like a stupid woman tomorrow but because she was in a position the king was such a nice man he didn't want to act but his advisors came and said no 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 these people are models that means not every offense carries the same gravity at every level 
you will do tomorrow what you did today and the consequence may be more are you seeing that now and then the bible says first is banished then the scene changes and the king calls for young virgins to come all within the province and then the bible says in shushan there was a little village girl called hadassah are we together yes the she was the niece of mordecai one who sat at the gate now please follow my story then the bible says a time came when certain people were conniving to the throne ahasuerus and mordecai heard that information and he took it to the king and told the king that this and that such and such is to happen and they apprehended the people and justice was administered then the bible says it was recorded and left are we together now yes so cut the long story short esther becomes queen but in that same palace the right hand man of the king who was a friend to vashti obviously are we together now by the name haman the bible says that this man was antagonistic to the purposes of god he hated the jews i believe had they left her man for long enough one day he would have implicated esther herself because his plan the bible says was to annihilate the jews one by one he would first focus on the ones outside the palace and then deal with the ones within the palace so her man was making life very difficult are we together now and then every other thing that happens is the hand of god and how he delivers people but now let's go very quickly to esther chapter 6. on that night look up please on that night could not the king sleep and he commanded to bring the book of records of the chronicles and they were read before the king i hope you know that the book of esther again is a type of our relationship with the christ esther being his bride the church mordecai being the holy spirit are we together now haman being satan the accuser of the brethren who once had access to the throne who was now banished are you getting the point now esther being queen king ahasuerus being the father now understand all of these stories the bible says that on that night could not the king sleep was it not in your Bible that you should give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem? Are we together now? So the Bible says that they were read before the king. Next verse. And it was found written that Mordecai had told of Bithana and Teresh, two of the king's chamberlains, the keepers of the door, who sought to lay hand on King Ahasuerus. Verse 3. And the king said, what honor and dignity hath been done, not will be done. That means under normal circumstances, this man should not be in this situation after communicating that level of benevolence. What had been done to this man, Mordecai, for this? Then said the king's servants that ministered unto him, there is nothing done for him. There is nothing done done for him the company runs by your intelligence but there is nothing done for him the lives and the destiny saved through your love for God but nothing done for him next verse and the king said who is in the court now her man was coming to the king the outward court of the king's house to speak unto the king to hang Mordecai look at this 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 wicked Luciferian type of attitude that means if the book of remembrance were not open for three more days Mordecai would have died remember 
it coincided with when you wanted to get the permission to finally finish him ah, it's good to be remembered on time it's good to be remembered on time now here is a man i'm sure the man had discussed with his wife we will hang that man today but that same time quarter to shame may god arise for someone in the name of jesus christ just when the desire of the wicked seems to find expression by the intelligence of god and by the mystery of remembrance may god raise help in the name of jesus christ follow my story her man was in the outward court of the king's house to speak to the king to hang Mordecai on the gallows that he had prepared for him. The guy had dug the gallows. I'm sure in his mind he had imagined how Mordecai would die. Rejoice not over me, my enemies. God can remember. Next verse. And the king's servant said unto him, Behold, her man standeth in the court. And the king said, Let him come in. Let's read on. Look up, please. So her man came in, and the king said unto him, what shall be done to the man whom the king delighted to honor when god is ready to lift you now notice when he was talking to the chamberlains he said what shall be done to mordecai but when her man now came if he said what should be done to mordecai he said uh -uh. what will be done to the man whom the king honored I hope you know this same mystery was used to conceal Jesus. When the Pharisees came and said, Are you the Christ? Who are you? John said, I am the voice of one crying. That means I will not tell you I'm Elijah that will forerun the coming of the Lord. Are we together now? Jesus Christ, that concealing continued to happen until the Father finally declared, This is my beloved son. So now Mordecai is hidden as the man who the king wants to honor now her man thought in his heart watch this to whom will the king delight to honor more than to myself so his selfishness was about to propose a fantastic idea to his peril he makes diviners mad that god can turn their reasoning backward so that they will not perform their enterprise And her man answered the king, For the man whom the king delighted to honor, comma, let the royal apparel be brought before the king, before which the king used to wear. That means her man had even been eyeing Hazarus himself. Are you seeing it now? Yeah. You are told to honor a man. And you say, King, you have many robes. There's one that you wear. Let it be done to that man. When you start wearing the king's clothes, you are shifting closer to the throne. <laughs> My God. And the horse that the king rided upon. Does that sound like Satan to you? I will be like the most high. I will arise above the stars of God. The same spirit that walketh in the sons of disobedience. It says, And the crown royal which is set upon his head. Verse 9. And let this apparel and the horse be delivered to the hand of, of one of the king's most noble princes. That they array the man without whom the king delighted to honor. Listen. And bring him on horseback through the streets of the city and proclaim before him thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delighted to honor full stop what a wicked man because he thought about himself and listen that opportunity only allowed his lost and imagination everything he had imagined to happen by all means now he had the chance and he said king this is what should be done to that man Next verse. Hallelujah. Ah. Then the king said to her man, 
make haste and take the apparel and the horse that thou hast said and do even so to Joshua Selman there is a strong anointing on what I share with you that seated at the king's gate let nothing fail of all that thou hast spoken nothing next verse then took Haman the apparel and the horse and arrayed Mordecai and brought him before the horseback through the street of the city and her man was dragging Mordecai. Thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delighted to honor. Next verse. And Mordecai came again to the king's gate. Now notice this. Let me explain to you what this means. Look up. After all that glamour, when Mordecai was done, he returned back to the gate and sat there. Will you climb the king's horse with his apparel and not go to the throne and sit down? Mordecai said, I will stay where I was lifted. There was a place I stayed. Even though I am rising, I will not forget that it was my service at the gate that caused remembrance to come. Can you wear the king's robe? Ride the king's horse? And still remain where the king kept you the king had not promoted him the king gave an instruction I'm sure while Mordecai was on that horse he was saying don't be carried away you are not yet in the palace you will go there but you are not yet there and he came down imagine the entire crowd say Mordecai I'm sure you are the assistant now and he says watch me let me return back to the place from whence that grace found me i cast my crown before the highest royalty i am undone before your glorious majesty you're the king of kings and lord of lord you are the king of kings you are the lord of lords your glorious majesty someone be mordecai tonight hey Listen, this right here is how great men fall. When they are tested with power, when they are tested with lifting, when they are tested with the anointing, when God begins to lift you and sudden lifting come overnight, chances are that you will forget. Deuteronomy chapter 8, don't turn there. It says, let it not be that when you have built houses, when you have done all these things, you will say, my power and my might has gotten this. He said, but thou shall remember. Listen, it's not only God alone that has a book of remembrance. Men must have books of remembrance. When David stood before Goliath, he said, the God who delivered me, I remember what happened. The God who delivered me from the bear, delivered me from the lion today. He would deliver me from this uncircumcised 
Philistine. Bless the Lord, all oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless the Lord, all oh my soul, and forget not his benefits. Forget not. Forget not that he took you from nothing. Forget not that there were 10 of you in your family and you are the first to rise now. Forget not that it was you, you started rising before you knew anything about favor. Forget not. Let's just stay here and let me teach you something very powerful, my brothers and my sisters. A man who can remember is a man who can be sustained. A man who can remember the faithfulness of God. Remember where you were yesterday. Remember the hand that lifted you. That is the man that will never go down. Pastors forget. Businessmen forget. Years ago, I remember I watched a Nigerian film of a village girl who was loved by a wealthy man. I don't know the name of the film. I don't even know who acted it. Are we together now? And he picked this village girl. I think she was selling something, granite or something. You know the way they do Nigerian films. And he saw her and liked her and picked her. His parents insulted him. He said, kill me. I will marry this village girl. And then like 11 years or so down the line, she had become the wife of this man. And there was another village girl who was a house help in that house. And this one's village girl ill-treated this woman. Ill-treated the young girl until one time, I think she got blind or paralyzed or something. And when she was paralyzed, it was the small girl that stayed with her in the hospital. And then a pastor came to pray for her for uh, uh, healing or something and then she began to remember that all of this and that and that then the long and short of the nigerian film is that she later discovered that that girl was her sister the little girl i think the, maybe the mother had the child somewhere also that was a sister that she was ill-treating let me tell you this the bliss of the palace made the butler to forget the bliss of greatness the applause of men you know most people sit down and say what is there in fame what? no 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 there is a reason why remembrance is necessary you want sustainable anointing you want sustainable impact please learn to remember you need to have a book of remembrance that is in the similitude of that which is on the throne i remember that 10 years ago when i was nothing this gentleman came i remember when i was soaking gary for instance you will say i remember so that you don't see him 10 years later and push him no there are mistakes you make when you are outside of the palace it does not matter if you make those mistakes in the palace you will pay for it Vashti could make any mistake outside the palace and go scot free. But now this mistake on the throne would cost her so much. Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. Thou shalt remember. Many have forgotten their fathers. Many have forgotten their mothers. Many have forgotten those who played all kinds of roles in their lives. Many have forgotten the God that lifted them. Many have forgotten the hand that helped them. Please listen to what I'm telling you. God is speaking to someone here. That a man can rise so high that the scar of yesterday's pain can so erode from your life and your mind it will never look like you were there it will never look like you ever climbed a bike in your life it will it will never look like you soaked gary i know sometimes we are excellent people but sometimes we allow the deception of success to so swallow us that we lose the ability to forget i have learned as a personal principle that modesty is the closest way to remember when you live a life that is modest 
temperate the bible calls it that he that strives for mastery is temperate that means define boundaries it was a mistake solomon made he refused to be temperate by the time we get to ecclesiastes solomon was a man who was utterly lawless and careless see let me tell you this i believe in prosperity i believe in all the blessings of god but look at me believers there is only so much cloth you can wear there is only so much food you can eat are we together now this is all the stomach you have another one will not come from anywhere thank god for all the cars you will have you will not remove one leg and put it in one jeep and remove your head and put it in another car the way we approach success if not guided by these mysteries many people will fall by the wayside this is why you find out uh, respectfully speaking this is true for men of god is true for business people is true for politicians they begin to rise and when the whole world is watching suddenly they vanish out of thin air the mistake of haman and the wisdom of mordecai are two lessons we must learn Mordecai rides on a horse the king's horse that honor is an honor that I don't think even the queen had and when Mordecai dropped he said thank you Haman he returned back to the king's gate that's where they found him was it not on your knees the anointing found you have you returned back <laughs> Was it not in the place of fasting and prayer that grace met you? Was it not in the place of dedication where you will roll like this, my dear brother that was rolling left and right? I'm sure for some of you that was so embarrassing. This guy is falling his hand. So a, a deceptive approach to life tells us. Listen, if you were lifted on your knees, remain on your knees. If you were lifted while singing his praise remain singing his praise it's very uncomfortable to remain on your knees when the world is watching you it's embarrassing you are not that naive you should stand so you can shine apostle joshua selman the man of god anointed but when you remember that if god forgets you anything can happen to you when god forgets you anything can happen it's a lesson we're still going to move on but i need you to get this listen i have shared this for years and told people be careful i have warned many people in my life and said if if you don't pay attention with the way you are managing success you will fall by the wayside it was not prophecy some of them thought it was nonsense nonsense and today sadly speaking many of them have gone down as if it was not god that lifted them do you know the higher you rise the more slippery the path is a day can come when you will even be ashamed to roll before God why will I roll my designers on the ground in the presence of kings and in the presence of nobles this was the mistake that Saul's daughter made that made her remain barren when David it was time to take the ark David danced and danced and rejoiced like a fool and the daughter of Saul said, King, you are no longer a shepherd. You are carrying a stupid bush mindset. You want to embarrass yourself. You are no longer, a, you are a king. Act like royalty. And he said, I'm dancing before God. Who took the kingdom from your father and gave to me? And the Bible says, God had that conversation. When God had that conversation, no matter what would have happened, she wouldn't have given birth. Because an indignation rose i continue to tell god i say lord i remain your boy huh i am other people's father i am other people's mentor i am other people's role model thank god for that 
but I remain your boy. You will always meet me where you found me. Adam, where are you? I heard thy voice, but I hid because I was naked. He said, her man, let's continue, sit please. Her man hasted to his house, mourning, crying, and having his head covered. Next verse. And Haman told Zeresh, his wife, and all his friends, everything that had befallen him. And said his wise men and Zeresh, listen, then said his wise men and Zeresh, his wife, unto him, If Mordecai be the seed of the Jews, before whom thou hast begun to fall, thou shalt not prevail against him, but shall surely fall before him that means this mistake you have made mordecai is the seed of the jews there are commandments that have been given the jews to not forget if mordecai is a true jew and will remember those ordinances you are finished because the factors that should make him fall and give way will not happen again your doom is true look at this mordecai once at the gate now I, I want to save us time because you read later on you find out that her man was hung at the gallows all kinds of things began to happen in his life culminated by esther's declaring to the king that this man wanted to destroy her people and the king went to his garden to think like any wise leader would do to not be hasty in speech and then he came and knelt down and was begging her and when the king came it looked like he was trying to rape the wife and the king said not only have you annoyed me you are now trying to rape my wife go and hang this guy the gallows was there waiting for them and they hung him there and that was the end of it and then eventually mordecai was honored to take the place of haman in the palace and that ends the story of esther listen carefully there are two women only in scripture whose names became the books of the bible and their names were written there so that we will remember what they did the two names ruth and esther were put in the bible the two women did the same thing notice that in all cases it had to do with men it had to do with marriage and it had to do with the power of submission the power of loyalty the power of not trivializing the things that God can do and the remembrance that follows Ruth remembered her mother-in-law and said I'm not leaving you your God will be my God your people will be my people and because she stayed and remembered how this woman was nice to her as a mother-in-law she led her and advised her to a field of a wealthy man called Boaz are we together now yes and Boaz saw her and loved her and took her I hope it is very interesting because for Esther she had never married but for Ruth she lost her husband and now an opportunity was coming again remembrance the book of remembrance that archives the works of the saints and that there is a reward system attached to it and that once you can invoke the mystery that will make God remember now take note he's not remembering because he's forgotten he's remembering because it is part of the ordinances of heaven for administering justice remembrance let me show you a scripture I found that really really changed my life and then I'll give you two keys and we'll pray never forget this scripture for the rest of your life Nehemiah chapter 13 and verse 14 please read with me everyone is projected if you can see Nehemiah chapter 13 and verse 14 one to read remember me oh my God concerning this stop 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 that means you can take any matter to god and provoke remembrance concerning this 
you can put your this there concerning my finances concerning my family situation concerning my joblessness concerning the tragedy happening you can go before god and say remember me oh my god concerning this and wipe not my good deeds that i have done for the house of my god and for the offices thereof when the lord showed me this scripture i remember crying like a baby i said this is powerful lord do not wipe these good deeds with all humility you can go before god lord i have served lord i am a faithful worker i stand before god it is true that i clean the seats lord i stand before you that you can go concerning this this is how to petition the parliament of heaven remember concerning this and all that i have done do not wipe it out for the house of the lord and for the offices thereof so god remembers and every time god remembers god acts please look at me my dad is such an amazing man quite a very very amazing man one thing i learned from my dad that i thank god for he's still alive i truly thank god for is that my dad was an extremely grateful man my dad paid attention i saw this growing up if you did something striking my dad would make a big deal out of it and will continue to raise a memorial over that act one time they were traveling to the village and it was in the night i don't know what took them there it was really late and the car broke down i think it was raining and there was they asked around and there was a mechanic now they were more than halfway the journey almost in the middle of nowhere and the mechanic was brought and he had to look at the car and the mechanic not only looked at the car i think i hope i'm right he followed them right to the village so that if anything happened he would be there do you know from that time until i left home every time my dad were traveling he would buy potato or buy something and stop at that house and say where is this man this was even it was it was more than 10 years down the line he was still doing it remembrance remembrance there are people today who are not supposed to be sitting with kings but are sitting because the kings remember their fathers remember their mothers you said you are the son of who that man let me tell you a little story in 1961 i was a young boy from the village with a torn trouser when your father gave me a cup of water the cup of water that was what 10 naira is now what a great destiny because of remembrance when god remembers you you are lifted when men remember you you are lifted you need the book of remembrance to be open where would i be if you left me now where would i if you left me now where would i be if you, left you waited thank you jesus do you know let me tell you in my personal walk with God there are things that God has done in my life even to this day he continues to do them and most times when I go before him to say thank you he will remind me of a particular kingdom not necessarily a sacrifice he will tell me that this that happened do you know there are families before I finish my story there are families that will never go down do you know why because they didn't have all the money but they left a little room for missionaries they left a little space 
and every man of God will come. You would think the people are in ministry. Their job is to cook. And you would think those things will be forgotten. But there is a book in the heavenlies where these things are recorded. And you will see the child will come many years later. Sometimes the child may not even be serious with God. But for that covenant of remembrance, God will come and visit the children. Remembrance. I once watched the documentary of Fiji Island. The revival that happened in fiji island and it was said that the missionaries the early missionaries who got there that the people oppressed them and killed them or butchered them or did something very tragic and then they died the moment they died is a documentary i think you can find it somewhere the fish in the sea stopped producing fish the land stopped producing at its maximum it wasn't even producing the nation literally plunged to depression until some intercessors began to pray they began to pray and to pray and to pray and then the lord revealed to them that there is an indignation that is rising over that territory and that they needed to plead the blood it would take the blood of the eternal covenant to solve this problem and then they had time to pray repent on behalf of the nation and then in addition fortunately they found the grandchildren of the missionaries that they had killed the grandchildren and they invited them to fiji island and they performed a ceremony officially apologizing loving them and they prayed and blessed the land just like child's play within a short time i don't know what time frame exactly strangely they saw fish in the sea and species of fish that they had not seen the first crusade that we had as a ministry the first crusade it was in plateau state i remember one of the the people who was guiding us the tour guide he took us to the graves of the missionaries and showed us the missionaries that were killed when they brought the gospel to that land and showed us the missionaries and showed us everything and that from that time that they killed the people all kinds of things had been happening in the land and i remember standing there to pray and we said lord the Lord is gracious and compassionate, the Bible says. He's slow to anger and rich in love. We stood there and said, we are also missionaries. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we stand by the blood that speaketh better things than the blood of any Abel there. And to speak and say in the name of Jesus that the land be released. I tell the truth and I lie not. We were somewhere standing and we were watching a hill. And all of a sudden, physical dark shadow. Like every boy, you could record it. We just began to see it slowly moving out of the land it took almost 45 minutes so it was not something you would rush like that just moving corporately out of the land where i schooled secondary school there used to be a tree the tree i'm not exaggerating the tree was dried but all the leaves were on it they tied ropes around the tree and you would ask and they would tell you there was a story that the tree was cursed there was a story that happened around there cursed as a memorial over the land why would god tell the nation of israel raise a memorial in this place and teach your children that means they should not forget if they ask you why do you do this teach them that this is why we do this so that you will know this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate keep it keep it my son he says pay attention to my words incline your ears to my sayings he says do not let them depart depart from your mouth keep them in the midst of your heart then he says they are alive to those who find them and health to their flesh as a man i've had people in my life who i almost cannot reject helping and lifting because they the the power of remembrance they will always remember and make reference and say apostle thank you you did so 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 and so to me you did so 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 and so to my family and they remind me of god and i'm compelled every time even when they don't ask me anything it's like their remembrance of that is is a debt that that i must pay 
I am moved to wanting to help them again. Many have forgotten. Like Haman. I want to employ the wisdom of Mordecai. That you never forget where he brought you from. Are we together? That there is remembrance. Now let me teach you before we pray very quickly. Two keys. Two keys that open the book of remembrance over a man. There are two scriptures that will reveal these keys. And then we'll pray. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9. This is the first key that you will need to open the book of remembrance over yourself, over your family, over your territory. Let's read together. One, two, go. And let us not be weary in well-doing. Uh-huh. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Watch this. The first key that opens the book of remembrance is consistency of your well-doing regardless of reward regardless of who sees you regardless of whatever commendation comes or does not come consistency weariness is something that can catch up with you when your value is not being appreciated when your impute is not being noticed are we together now we are humans and if you continue to strive to contribute in the life of a man a ministry an organization a system and it looks like you are not noticed and you are not rewarded the side effect is weariness and the bible says let us not be weary that means that your reward is tied to your consistency this country is full of stories of people who deserve to be rewarded politically spiritually are we together financially in business in ministry but for many years they had all kinds of hamans around their lives around their offices yet the people continue to be steadfast many of our loved ones have situations where they were qualified to be the ones sitting at certain positions but manipulations happened and yet they continued being consistent the bible says if you are consistent if you are steadfast if you are unbending in well-doing the bible gives you a guarantee that a season according to the law of times and seasons the law of time and chance because it happened to them all the bible says one day like the hand of a clock it must come to your turn and you must find expression this is true this is true I met a precious lady yesterday one one dear lady I used to know her that should be 2004 2005 in the campus here she used to sing in one of the fellowships wonderful lady she would sing her heart out dance and celebrate God everyone wanted to attend the fellowship just because I mean the lady would lead worship with all she was always smiling always happy and then I had the opportunity to see her yesterday and I saw her she was happy now a mother of many children and I looked at her and then she brought me her album and said apostle I remember those days and I said oh dear who told you God does not remember who told you God forgets the sacrifices of the Saints there are things you are doing today you are already securing tomorrow with it a day will come you will watch the video of this level of koinonia and tears will come out of your eyes he said that was me cleaning the chairs that was me playing the keyboard and someone stands to say you are not supposed to be where you are and god says it's too late your consistency imagine if mordecai got tired and said look i'm tired of bailing the king out and then her man would be receiving the glory mordecai was consistent even when he rode upon the king's back he returned to stay where he was found everybody say consistency listen this is an encouragement to someone right now the worship team got it powerfully what's that song again you are not turning back where's Tosin? 
not turning back and not going just sing that part for me I'm gonna wait on you Jesus 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 yeah, that's the song I'm gonna wait on back now I'm not turning back now I'm not turning back now I'm not turning back now One more time I'm gonna wait on you Jesus 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 and I'm not turning back now that I'm not turning back now I'm not turning back now I'm not turning back now listen let me teach you something impatience will always give birth to what will fight your promise you must sustain the stamina to stay let God meet you where he last instructed you Lord I will continue another woman who showed us the power of waiting was Anna the prophetess the Bible says for about 60 years from the time she lost her husband listen carefully for about 60 years she was in the temple do you know what it means to pray without results for 60 years Abraham did it for 25 years hey my soul wait thou upon the Lord there is power in waiting there is power in staying there is power in remaining I keep sowing I don't see the heavens open but I will continue sowing I keep speaking I may not see the result but I will never stop speaking I will keep serving I may not see the result but I will keep serving I will hold on to the word men may mock me they may call you stupid you are wasting your time where is the consolation when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion we were like them that dream and our mouths were filled with laughter and they testified among the hidden that the Lord had done great things for us he says the Lord had done great things for us whereof we are glad turn again our captivity like the streams of the Negev the Bible says they that sow in tears listen koinonia it is possible to sow in tears and the Bible says in due season John remained in the wilderness until his season of appearing hear me listen to me you must conquer the pressure that men will bring to you they will push you into seasons that are not yet God's design they will push you into things that are not yet God's design Mordecai can you remain in the palace can you stay at the gates Mordecai looked at her man and knew that her man was occupying his position but the battle is the Lord's he remained at the gate if Haman tried to fight Mordecai, Mordecai would kill him because Mordecai, Haman was the king's friend. Can I tell you this, my brothers and my sisters? It will not always look like this. Let me speak to you. It will not always be that you will go home every night and wonder, what do I eat? No, no. The Bible says, why we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. Man of God, it will not always be that you go to a meeting and the power of God will not be there. No, you, you are in a season. Stay, stay, I'm prophesying to you. You are in a season. Build stamina and stay. A day will come when the glory of God will mantle you. Stay while you learn. Jesus, you are Savior, not at its twelve. You are Savior, not at age 18. Jesus, you are Savior, not at 30. You are only Savior at 33. The 18 year old Jesus would not save the world. Joseph, you are a deliverer, but not in the pit. 
Please listen to what I teach you tonight. These are secrets of the kingdom. My soul wait. So the first key that causes the book of remembrance to be open. The book of remembrance in heaven and the book of remembrance before men is consistency. Keep praying. You look like a fool, but keep praying. Bros, you are still here. Five years, you are not making progress. Your colleagues have started ministry. Stay there. Stay there. Stay there. Stay there while you pray. Listen, let me tell you. One of the most powerful virtues of the spirit is self-control. Many of the gifts of the spirit are tied to it. Why should I keep quiet when I can prophesy? Why should I not talk when I can preach? There are people in this ministry that I love so much. Scattered in and around. They are mighty men in the spirit. In ministry. Some of them are mighty business people in this ministry. Multi-millionaires. You will never see any pressure to be known. Any pressure to be seen. They come and sit down they serve god they worship god yet they are mighty prophets they are mighty apostles let me tell you something when you see a man that has self-control respect such a man it is powerful to have what to say and keep quiet it is powerful to know what to do and still remain it is powerful to see a door that is open and yet not move if the door is closed it's not a proof of your stamina the door is closed but can you stand before an open door and yet not move hallelujah this is very powerful i've had the opportunity to meet a lot of great people in my life and sometimes when people want to tell me who and who i'm going to meet they'll say ah, apostle this man is a great man or maybe he's an influential man politically or is a great man financially or spiritually and apostle ah, these people have this and that and i stand before the lord god of heaven and i lie not i have never been under pressure to tell anybody sorry sir can you help me and buy recharge card uh I, there is a ministry called koinonia if the ministry is blessing you can you send 10 naira no no consistency god is ministering to someone now because you see let me tell you this there are many of you that coming to koinonia is even an embarrassment to you because by the time you come they look at you and say for five years no car no nothing the only thing you do is to pray like a fool the only thing you do is to loiter around and sometimes you can feel stupid for being consistent i give you a scripture you are already opening a door stay there till the door opens you see the thing about god is that five minutes to your lifting it will still not be like it five minutes to your rising joseph you are still in the prison while the person has left the palace and is coming to you already you are not seeing him oh israel when god is already winning the battle you don't have to fight but you are not seeing just believe in what jehoshaphat is saying hallelujah consistency i will pray as before i will fast as before i will worship as before listen never be ashamed of your today you will miss it tomorrow receive the grace and the stamina to stay let people laugh at you let people mock you especially for our dear ladies because society has all kinds of pressures on ladies show us your husband is he a rich man show us this show us that have you traveled to um, um um asia america london uk and you stand there feeling stupid for loving the lord let us not be weary in well-doing there are preachers that need to stay lord what should i do now should i start a church or should i stay and god says just keep doing what you are doing in due season we shall reap can i tell you this the season of reward for a man's life is a fearful dimension of that man's life 
for reasons you cannot tell and explain you will see that god will command the territory to begin to sing your songs and to speak your purposes david was going to be king but for a very long time he was in the wilderness he killed a lion but remained in the wilderness he killed a bear if that news got to Saul, they would have called him to serve in the palace, but he would never be king. Sometimes don't be quick to announce your achievements. Let God and time reveal it. Just come. Kill the bear, but remain quiet in the wilderness. This itch to talk sometimes is proof of weakness. You sabotage where you are going. Did the Bible not already tell you that you cannot light a lamp and hide it under a bushel? Waiting is very hard. It's proof of spiritual maturity to wait until seasons come. Hallelujah. I've shared with you my story for many years in this ministry. God would not allow me to buy a car. Even when Koinonia was on, crowds of people here, I would climb a bike and come for Koinonia. You would think I were a stupid person. It was not lack of finances. Just like that. Lord, why do you want to humiliate me? I love you so much. Why won't you leave me to buy a car? Then people started bringing cars to give me and God would tell me to just bless them and let them go. If I were your relative, would you clap for me for that kind of brain? You would just be careful what you call common sense. It has destroyed many people. The way of the spirit is very strange. I will never forget one time a man came to sit in front of me and said this is what God gave him he was going to bring me car keys and he carried the keys of the car and I was already smiling when he came again mm -mm. he said this man has not discussed with his wife his wife would join the people who would talk about you and say you have manipulated the husband I appreciated the man prayed for him with all my heart and told him to carry the car and go you see that Will I ever have a need of a car today? No. Never, ever, forever. Listen, waiting pays. When God wants to pay you, he will backdate it. Press down. Shaken together to make room for more. Feel it till it runs over. sustain the stamina to wait shut your mouth and your ears against the things that people say and all the rubbish and the nonsense that you will hear people say you are on your way to a dimension of grace he's training you he's teaching you listen you can stay with god you are lifting people out of the wheelchair and god will tell you not to honor one invitation sit down lord as what be a brother in welfare not even prayer band not even any place lord at least let me go to prayer department he says welfare is where i need you but lord are you aware i'm a prophet and you, i will be a prophet to the nations he will say cook let me teach you how to feed men and you are there turning food and somebody says do you ever have the ambition of being a chef and you almost want to want to slap the person and say are you do i look like a chef and God says, turn it. I teach you how to overturn. And you carry that cooler on your head. And you are marching. And someone says, ah, emoji. Was it not you that was in our house yesterday? He said this. You mean, I thought you were a pastor. He said, no, I work in the welfare department. What kind of church is this? Is it that they don't see men of God in this church? And you feel stupid. You drop that cooler and say, no. God, this this lady, I she 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 saw me prophesy. God says, carry that cooler. Because it is while you are carrying that cooler, you are qualifying yourself. A day will come, you will be able to carry any luggage and not be ashamed because you learned how to carry something embarrassing. Hallelujah. I always tell people jokingly I didn't start ministry preaching let me tell you you've heard my story I started ministry playing keyboard 
for a reverend who were part of the, the it was a prison ministry they were part of the people who preached later on to general obasanjo when he was in prison they used to allow the mission agencies to go and preach they preached to him i used to play keyboard for them i had my local church and then later on he started a church when he started a church it was quite a distance from where i would live i would carry my own keyboard by myself this was 93 94 i would carry keyboard by myself and trek to the international hotel where he was using and drop it there i would play that keyboard they will finish share the grace i will carry it and trek back with joy the only thing i ever got throughout my time of serving in that ministry was one cassette and one bottle of fanta when they were dedicating his album i would have been offended and i would have been angry and say you don't know who i am the proof of sonship is servanthood if you can serve you are a son indeed let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus though he is god he considered it not robbery he came and humbled himself died even the death on the cross wherefore on the strength of that do you know that jesus was almost giving up at gethsemane as a man if it's possible let this cup pass over me i said nevertheless not my will but yours be done so this is the first key someone say i will continue better is the end of a thing the bible says than the beginning thereof it is not enough to start you must trust god for grace and listen my brothers and my sisters i admit to you that it is painful your humanity will catch up with you while you wait yes as a gentleman they will look at you and say i used to know you in 2000 you mean you are still here how much is this shoe you are buying which church did you say you are serving? Say, now i've been promoted i'm a deacon he said deacon deacon indeed your useless life looking like your yesterday you have not changed and you stand there feeling stupid for serving god and god says continue i almost gave up sam and like i just couldn't take light anymore this is an encouragement for someone my, my problems held me bound depression weighed me down but god kept me so i wouldn't let go god's mercy kept me so i won't let go god can keep he can give strength to the faint whatever you have to do keep moving even if you cry cry but keep moving even if you feel discouraged keep moving insist that I will never stop if God has not stopped on me then I will not stop on myself I know he's called me to be a worshiper to the nations my first song they forgot it in two days you may be saying some of you put your songs online after three months only two people liked it no problem just continue some of you put your sermons online and you had only four comments and all of them were criticizing you go back to bible school someone wrote nonsense another person said look false prophet and he just said i will never go online again i will never preach this thing again no Reinhard Bonke said the first time he used to escort a man for crusade and that day the man told him God said he would not come back again Reinhard Bonke would be the person to preach and Reinhard Bonke said he was shaking he was saying Lord is this how you have chosen to embarrass me and he stood and began to preach and he began to minister to the sick and people started shouting blind eyes i can see deaf ears i can hear people were rising out of wheelchair please continue receive the grace to continue receive the grace to keep praying receive the grace to keep speaking 
Hallelujah. Someone can come to your family and say, Kai, this is your family. You will never change. You will pull out just like this. Keep declaring. With my eyes will I see the salvation of the Lord. Surely there is an end. My tomorrow is better than my today. I will one day be called Beulah and Hephzibah. I am the planting of the Lord. A well-watered garden. Thou hast caused men to ride upon our heads. We walk through water and through fire. But thou broughtest us into a wealthy place. The Lord is my light and salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid? He won't stop. He won't stop. Till my life looks like him. He won't stop. He won't stop. Till I look just like him. I won't stop. I won't stop. Till I look just like him. I won't stop. I won't stop. Till I look just like him. Please sit down. Key number two and then we'll pray. The first key that can cause remembrance towards you before God and before men is to not be weary in well-doing continue rewarded or not continue commended or not continue understood or not continue number two Isaiah 43 verse 26 thank you Jesus Isaiah 43 and verse 26 want to read koinonia put me in remembrance let us plead together declare thou that thou mayest be justified god is speaking put me lift up a cry from the earth to heaven and say lord remember put me in remembrance put me in remembrance are you ready for one powerful scripture you should add to your library if there are five scriptures in your library let this be there ah i found this scripture day before yesterday i was meditating it fired like an arrow from my head to my feet i blasted in tongues i said that's right you see the bible said the kingdom of god is like a man who lost his treasure and you find candle and broom you sweep it when you find that you rejoice numbers chapter 10 verse 9 numbers 10 verse 9 look up koinonia and read it with faith in your heart ready one to read and if ye go to war in your land against the enemy that oppress you then shall ye blow an alarm with the trumpets and ye shall be remembered before the Lord your God and ye shall be saved from your enemy I now know what they did in before Jericho that when you stand and your enemies overwhelm you lift up the trumpet is the power of praise oh, shall he scabber with us? lift up that trumpet The word is yada. Praise. Lifted with understanding. That when you see that you are encompassed by enemies and there is no way for victory. When you pray, in addition to that prayer, put God in remembrance. Then don't disturb him again. Lift up your trumpet and begin to blast it like the priest that you are. Go round your Jericho while you blast the trumpet. Go round your Jericho while you blast the trumpet. And the Bible says that sound, that shofar will come before God as a memorial. This is scripture. See, let God be true and let every man be a liar. hallelujah please take it higher for me look at this scripture it says you shall be remembered before the lord 
when you lift up your trumpet I just saw a trumpet this is what I saw in the spirit like a sound a shofar The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it like the ark of Noah, and they are saved. Listen, the Bible says, though the olive may not produce, they may not be fixed on the vine. He said, yet, yet I will rejoice. I will rejoice. I will joy in the God of my salvation. My Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. It says, though weeping and joys for a night, Koinonia, hear me, joy comes with the morning. Listen, there is one thing I know about God that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man what the Lord has in store for them that love him. But the Bible says he has revealed them that when I praise him, when I lift up a cry and say, Lord, remember me concerning this, when I'm done saying it, I begin to sing and dance like a madman and sing my way to another level and dance my way to another dimension. It does not make sense. He said, I will sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously. The horses and his rider has been thrown into the sea. Hallelujah. Please hear me. Do not trivialize what you have heard. Do not trivialize this deep mystery. Your destiny helper has a book of remembrance. Men have books of remembrance. Listen, there are things you have done for the kingdom. Some of you have served God. Some of you have prayed. Some of you have helped men. 
Some of you, your parents lifted people and everybody has forgotten about you. Let me tell you what to do. When there are men in your life who can help you and they forget about you, don't go knocking their offices. You are, you are doing it the wrong way. Go to the God of all flesh, the Father of spirits. Raise a cry before him. Unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Lord, I bring before you this petition. I am a member of welfare department. I am a member of prayer band. I'm a member of worship team. Let God be true. He says to lift up that incense and then begin to sing. Can you open your mouth and begin to blast in tongues? Pray in the spirit. Koinonia, pray. Man of God, pray. Businessman, pray. Pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please look at me. Esther chapter 6 verse 1. Please media help us quickly. Esther chapter 6 and verse 1. And on that night could not the king sleep. The same way Nebuchadnezzar or Darius could not sleep because the three Hebrew boys, Daniel, was in the lion's den. Listen, I'd like you to pray in tongues for the next one minute. And listen, this should be your focus when you pray. Father, wake everyone sleeping who should be awake to remember me. Lift your voice and pray in the spirit. On that night, then could not the king sleep. hallelujah hallelujah so number one the king had to wake up number two he commanded to bring the book of remembrance you are about to pray say after me in the name of jesus say father i stand by the blood and in the name of jesus and i declare tonight let the book of remembrance in heaven and on earth concerning me concerning my reward let it be open now lift your voice and pray <laughs> Let the seal be 
Look up. Look up. Listen. The first time the Spirit of the Lord opened the book of Esther to me. The book of Esther as a book containing a mystery of favor was opened to me. It was a February of that year. The entire month I prayed favor. I prayed favor into my life. I believed it with all my heart because I found it there that books can be opened. Hallelujah. Now, listen. Favor is real. Please hear me. Don't sit down and waste your time and hate God for nothing. Favor is very, very real. Hallelujah. All blessings come from God through men to you. From God through men to you. When the book is opened in heaven, the spirit opens the book. And the bride also opens the book on earth. It is the spirit and the bride that tells the word to come. Listen, it is not difficult when the book is opened. Ahasuerus said... What should be done to a man who the king chooses to honor is a choice. It's a choice. God can choose to honor you. Jacob have I loved. Esau have I hated. There is nothing that can be done when God's jealousy has been invested upon you. Listen to me. Believers, in Christ we are people who are beloved. Do you know what it means to be loved? That means God has made himself vulnerable to you. Beloved, I have loved thee with an everlasting love, he said. And I have drawn you with my loving kindness. But that the book of remembrance be opened. I have seen these books opened. Even for me, I've sat down quietly and suddenly God brings to my mind the names of people. Not word of knowledge. Not word of knowledge. God does not just tell me their names. God connects something they had done to my life. And I suddenly become indebted to them. I just remember. Don't forget that men may not know why you are looking at this. But there is a God who has the all-seeing eye. That looks at you and knows that this man of God should not rise. Are we together? many of us want resources as i've lifted this one thousand now many of you have been looking at it you are not even hearing me again listen you are not faithful if you are faithful is proof that you are a steward can god give you this and say let me have it back and you say lord it's yours it's proof of faithfulness lord after all it came from you I, I, you took me from nowhere soaking Gary if you have given me this if you make a demand it goes there are many of you once your hands hold it it's only a need a secular need that will release it the voice of God has no right to make you release this and then you want lots of it and we keep joking 
that we are having dreams and seeing god is not stupid this system is very orderly once your heart is not with god you won't find anything are we together i've shared this story here once upon a time in this area then nobody knew me nobody i was invited to go and minister somewhere and just like it rained very heavily tonight i had prepared fasted prepared to go there and then the rain started and the people were expecting me and that time there was no protocol to come put umbrella etc all of these formalities that was how i i rolled my sleeves rolled my trouser and held my bible i started praying in tongues in the rain lord don't mind me being soaked just bless your people if your people are blessed i am satisfied are we together now i remember going there and then to make matters worse the church didn't even make arrangement for umbrella to receive me it was then steve strings who saw me from outside and collected he was also invited he collected an umbrella to run go and receive me outside when i came in they asked me to wait they had to shift some people in front to create space for me to come and sit down it looked painful it looked ego stinging but it was a test of faithfulness can you be faithful even when your reputation is being insulted not everybody will insult your reputation keep forbearing with those who don't value you then you will qualify for those who can value you there are some of you today you will go to minister somewhere they will disrespect you some of you are intelligent business people surrounded by those who have no value keep at what you are doing you will come to a point where god will bring you to people who can recognize the grace you carry and my goodness happy are you when you enter that season in your life where you are surrounded by those who have a recognition of what you carry and will be willing to bless my life was not always like this this ministry was not always like this the first crusade you see crowds everywhere and we're happy many of you who follow me on facebook or follow follow the ministry uh, on facebook and follow what we are doing and you know all the crowds and the things that happen when every time i travel many people just see it and think it's just because he's anointed it's not just because i'm anointed with all humility what you are seeing is a product of many years of faithfulness i've shared with you our first crusade it never you see the secrets of men are in their stories don't just hear the story discern the message are we together i told you about our first crusade i think we're about 20 or so the entire crusade ground i'm not sure we're up to 50 the first crusade we prayed fasted organized when it was time to pray for the sick the whole team had the opportunity one-on-one -on -one. it was a test of faithfulness many of us do not want to start small as a student you want to wear the same cloth with a bank manager and so you open your gate wide for a devourer to come and rubbish your life and keep punishing you are we together there are men of god who start in ministry everybody they see is their colleague take it easy move gradually no i'm anointed if not because of condition don't i have a better revelation than kenny and god keeps you there say stay there i just caught a new revelation there's nobody to hear you because there is no track record you can look at a pastor who doesn't seem to have any serious revelation and wonder why god keeps him there faithfulness all he may say is god bless you god lift you god anoint you and then you are there in your pride and arrogance i just finished pieces in the book of ephesians and you remain there for many years is god speaking to us never be ashamed of the track record of faithfulness lord this is the level of grace that you have given me i am happy i am proud of it lord you have given me the anointing to clean chairs i know that you have called me to be an apostle to the nations but in this season my assignment is to clean chairs i receive the grace to do it faithfully not just to clean chairs and say kai oh god if not just people me cleaning chairs and god says that's it you see that and you'll never rise everybody say faithfulness say it again faithfulness 
Matthew chapter 25 we're going to read three verses 21 23 and 29 thank you Matthew 25 we're reading 21 23 and we're reading 29 I just want to show you something and then we we'll begin to pray this was the parable of the talents five two and one talent and this to the one who had five his Lord said unto him after being faithful he said well done good and what faithful servant thou hast been faithful over a few things let me show you how greatness happens in the kingdom thou hast been faithful over a few things what's your reward i will make thee ruler over many things when you are promoted in the kingdom many things happen to you one the anointing upon your life is multiplied number two your operation becomes easy number three god expands your self-influence to cause more people to hear your voice is a product of faithfulness you have been faithful over a few things i gave you a teaching anointing and i did not give you an anointing for miracles and you were not ashamed to teach the people as best as you knew to every time they ask you man of god why is it that we don't see miracles in your life be patient I'm coming I'm not ashamed to say God is bringing me there for now is the teaching grace he has given me I will teach I will make Bible study notes and God is saying this is a man who will not only be a good shepherd he will be a good manager of my anointing and one day that man comes to a meeting and all of a sudden an impartation comes upon him the dimension that has been absent is now supplied by the Spirit he goes back not just as a teacher but as a worker of miracles 23 to the man with the two talents he said his lord said unto him well done good and faithful servant same thing thou hast been faithful over a few things so it's not the size of what you were giving the same commendation i will make thee ruler over many things let's go to 29 29 for unto everyone that hath this is a mystery in the kingdom that when you have it's a sign that you were a good manager and the reward is that he shall have what abundance of anything abundance here doesn't just talk of finance abundance of the anointing abundance of influence abundance of access to revelations and then it says but from him that hath, and is not faithful now he says even that which he had shall be taken away it is not only satan that takes things away god too takes things away are we together now not every reduction is caused by demons there are reductions that are a testimony it's a report card from god to you that something is wrong with your stewardship when god increases you members rise today and mysteriously members just go down sometimes it could be that it's a message from god that i trusted you with 30 people and i observed your stewardship your stewardship does not merit multiplication you rise in finances and then sometimes you just go down never to rise again it could be a message that you need to upgrade on your stewardship you rise in influence and all of a sudden you find out within a season all your helpers are no longer there all the people whose voice who who listen to your voice and acknowledge your voice are no longer there it could be a sign that you are abusing the privilege of stewardship are we together the prayer that you need to pray in this season is for God to help you that whilst you are waiting for a supply of greater dimensions of his grace but that he grants you the fortitude to be faithful if God gives you 10 naira be faithful if God gives you one shoe polish it don't sit down running your eyes on every shoe and say don't worry except God is not my God I'm coming and and that shoe will say you are not coming this is not how to get me you get me by washing the one you have it's a rubber shoe wash it it's a 200 naira trouser wash it are we together now we live in a society that applauds people for living a fake life that claps for people for jumping seasons 
and as soon as they clap for you and as frequent as they clap for you that's the same way they will clap against you because every time you jump up you must go down but when you grow up you remain up the difference between jumping and growing is that you are still connected to your root when you jump you are suspended nothing backs you no support so you must come down when you grow up the tallest building in the world is still connected to the earth that's why it stands nothing suspended has an a, a, the ability to stay indefinitely when they send satellites to orbit the earth and orbit other planets and all of that after a time requirement because they are not connected to the earth they must be sent back planes don't fly indefinitely in the sky they get to a point where they must make contact with the earth again for some of you here this is your miracle service tonight the lord is speaking to you you are living a fake life go back to the basics let me tell you this don't ever generalize success just because everybody around you is successful does not mean you are successful go back and learn the principles corporate success is deception are you hearing what i'm saying now we are all successful a day will come life will separate you and you stand as an individual and it will be a test of your values whether or not it's like a defense the way students do defense you will need to defend and validate your success any door god has not opened for me i'm not under pressure to go because when he opens it he will open it in honor do you know if god does not open a door your tenacity can force that door to open that you forced a door and it opened a man can go around with complimentary cards i'm a man of god i'm a gospel artist in fact you've not had anything like you just invite me and watch what happens you can go around and out of the 1000 invitations you beg for you may get one or two or three or four and you call it increase you see when you open the door by yourself you have to keep it open by yourself but when god opens it god when he opens it he keeps it by his own hand the hands that lifted me will uphold me to the end i will not be afraid there is a hand that lifted me will uphold me to the end i will not be hallelujah years ago i had a conversation we're about to pray with a gentleman and he asked me a very honest question he said apostle i've come for koinonia and i've seen the crowds of people and he asked a question he said can you reproduce these results and i said that's not me to answer you are asking time not me keep watching and i think two weeks ago he sent me a text you know just joking I'm, I'm just saying it and he's just sent a text and he said apostle you are dangerous i say i'm not dangerous the laws of god are dangerous it is not me it is the laws of god whoever will keep these truths it will work for you are you getting what i'm saying even if you are afraid of yourself trust his laws and watch them shock you and make a wonder out of your life brothers and sisters listen to me in a few minutes now we're going to begin to pray and many of you will stand and watch your life change as if it's magic it is not just because a man who is anointed is standing before you there is a system in the kingdom we make our boast first in the lord and then in the power of his might his might the power of his might the power that is released when his laws operate those who don't understand will look at these things and think it's boasting it's not boasting it's true the predictability of god's principles hallelujah i challenge you today that much more than the miracles you are receiving you must trust god to go back and say lord teach me your ways 
we reign in this kingdom we're about to pray now i want to show you a very dangerous scripture that god opened my eyes to brothers and sisters if god does not open your eyes to see how a thing works you may never know do you know that in every challenge that you have right now a way of escape is there but it takes god to open your eyes psalm 77 turn there let me show you something psalm 77 and verse 19 psalm 77 verse 19 give us from amplified if it's possible lion of judah my trust is in you alpha and omega my trust is in you i am that i am my trust is in you tonight i put them on you my trust is in you it says your way in delivering your people was through the sea listen carefully the same sea that was an obstacle it said their way of escape was inside that water inside that trouble it says and your paths through the great waters how can you be in trouble and god says in that trouble that's where your answer is but it takes your eyes to see it god hides a formula in your pain and keeps it there until revelation opens you to it it says your way of delivering your people was through the sea the same sea he said that your path through the water yet you pass through it and cover it and nobody can trace your footsteps this one give us king james again it will take revelation for you to know how can i look at a water challenges and great waters he said thy way is in the sea in that rain challenge is a formula that can make you a landlord but it will take the spirit of revelation in that sickness that brought you to koinonia is hidden a mystery that can bring you into the healing anointing it says thy way is in the sea and thy path in the great waters and thy footsteps are not known god what kind of god are you you do something and cover it so no man can just look and say ah I, uh. but when he opens your eyes all of a sudden you will discover that so the water can part i never knew and all of a sudden there will be dry ground and you walk to it and the egyptians will think and god will cover it and say i don't open it for everybody it is a way but not for everybody are we together these are some of the deep mysteries about the anointing sometimes you see me give you instructions that don't make sense shout jesus keep quiet it does you will try it and it won't work it's a mystery there is a way in it there is a pathway that when god opens your eyes to the systems of the kingdom then you can see things that don't make sense and make wonders out of them god is speaking to someone here that the prayer you are praying the answer is already within your environment all it takes is for your eyes to see Hagar was punished by Sarah. The Bible says she was in the wilderness dying of test. The young lad cried to heaven. When an angel appeared, all of a sudden they saw an oasis bringing water. The water was there, but her eyes could not see. The ways of God. And let me tell you, this is why we come to, how, to the house of God. Because there is something about the corporate gathering of God. Give us verse 13 of the same scripture. Give us verse 13 of the same scripture. Go ahead and read. Thy ways, O God, where is it? Is found in your sanctuary. When we come here, it says in your sanctuary, in your house, you have, you have ordained a place that when we meet, you will show us a way. When God put this miracle service and called this ministry and put all of these things, it's not just a ritual. There is a mystery about the sanctuary he has ordained. That every time you come before God, he must open a way. 
so don't carry your challenges and come and you are wondering and say i went to every church i don't know what the church you went to believe but in this sanctuary there is a way there is a way i dare to tell you there is a way man of god i have been in i've gone everywhere with all due respect i don't know where you went to but there is a way in the sanctuary solomon dedicated a place and said lord let me tie a covenant to this sanctuary if any man prays and turns this direction not for the sake of their faith for the covenant in this place answer them when they were about to kill daniel in the days of that of, of nebuchadnezzar daniel opened the gate and faced jerusalem he, he was afraid he couldn't depend on his faith he opened the door and said lord i engage the covenant that covenant that solomon made with the temple in jerusalem it is not only a man that can bring miracles a place can be anointed to birth miracles it was in a place that jacob went to sleep he never met a man but he met a place and that night the heavens were open and he saw a ladder that connected the heavens he said this is the house of god this is the gates of heaven tonight i want to stir up faith many of you have come you have made sacrifices pastor femi thank you thank you so so much praise the lord many of you have come from several places you have made sacrifices please don't come here wasting your time and don't come here wondering let's see what god will do already i can answer you you won't get anything already let me let me be honest with you because god is not a magician but there are people that come here determined and say lord i have seen you in this place i can't go back this way that something must shift in my life something must change in my life not all of you may be trusting god for sickness for healing you know but many of us are trusting god for one thing or the other i'd like you to believe there is a way in the sea i bring you a word there is a way this kingdom operates by mysteries the bible says there is no temptation given but that which is common to man you are not the first to have house rent issue you are not the first to have financial issues listen carefully you are not the first to have academic issues you are not the first to have excuse me spiritual issues you are not the first but though we are few we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river. That's a part of this song I like. Though we are few, there are witnesses. There are people who have been healed. There are people who God changed their lives overnight. There may not be many, but they are on earth, testifiers of His faithfulness. As a testament that if God did it before, he can do it again and this is the song we'll be singing forever listen it is our confidence in god and our confidence in his ways that gives us the audacity to gather people and say come he will change you without the presence of god and access to the ways of god we are we are scammers we are not we are not just liars we are scammers why do you gather people and tell them come we dare you to come we call a solemn assembly not only because we know god by the privilege of his grace we have found grace with him and he has made us stewards of the mysteries ephesians chapter 3 this will be the last scripture ephesians chapter 3 verse 2 from verse 2 it says if ye have heard paul is speaking of the dispensation of grace of the grace of god which is given me to you what for your sake how that by revelation verse 3 he made known unto me how did paul know it by revelation 
he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote afore in few words verse 4 whereby when you read another word is whereby when you experience it you may know the basis he may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ verse 5 a mystery that has been hidden in other ages let me tell you some of the things we are doing although they are spiritual although they are biblical they are mysteries that have been hidden they are there the same way many people swam through the red sea although there was a way it took a generation of men to be open to that mystery there are many mysteries that control results that have not been routed by many but the bible says that in other ages was not made known to the sons of men as it is now revealed to his holy apostles and prophets how by the spirit by the spirit it was a revelation that god gave me that people write their requests and come and drop here it's not something that i copied from anywhere it's a revelation stupid though but look at the testimonies that have come out from it are we blessed now god's servant bishop david oyedeko was given the revelation of feet worship a revelation that had not been known to anybody people read it and all of a sudden the testimonies that come out of it people had communion people take communion in orthodox churches and different churches and just take it even while they are drunk but somebody came with a light about communion and all of a sudden people take communion now and cancers just die there are mysteries brothers and sisters there are many people that never knew that the house of god is powerful praise the lord are we together so you must understand that god in this season wants to shift you but you won't just shift you just by saying shift there are mysteries tonight i bring you a word there is a way in the sea hallelujah there is a way there is a way there is something god can do about your finances there's something god can do about your family situation you left fire on the mountain and came back you wait until the red sea parts and god will rubbish pharaoh tonight in your presence rise up on your feet begin to thank the lord for what you have heard tonight cry for the grace to be faithful go ahead cry for the grace to be faithful cry for the grace to be faithful lord grant me the grace to be faithful grant me the grace to stay as you lift me grant me the grace not to rush seasons in my life grant me the grace Grant me the grace. Hallelujah. Just pray one prayer. Lord, change my story. Visit me tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Pray with faith. Change my story. Visit me. Visit me tonight. Hallelujah. Tonight is an unusual service because time has gone. We are going to be very, very fast. Very, very fast at that. Um, like I told us, we are going to start praying for the sick. We'll start by praying for the sick. And um, now this is how we're going to do it. Because of, because of, those of you outside, don't worry. You don't worry. Wherever you are, you will be attended to. Are we together? You will be attended to. So, 
hold on before i ask the people to come you don't have to just cooperate with the ushers if they need you to do anything just just it's a temporary inconvenience we're doing this just to be able to manage time and to do all that we have to do hallelujah praise the lord now please hold on let's let's not be distracted those of us who are trusting god for healing is a miracle service it's not just limited to healing but we're going to pray for the sick now now we're going to do this very fast and um please those that will be ministering let's let's do it very fast it's not in how long listen let me tell you something about the anointing it's not just in how long you are touched or the frequency just a touch is enough for the anointing the same way a small drug can step into your body and that's it the wonders are done i'd like you to believe god to touch you change your life whether it's a blood disease whatever it is let's agree with you hallelujah we'll do that very very fast while we are doing that please um if you have come with your requests ushers um please help them pr department you can join them protocol let's just join and see how we can make this very fast so that at the same time we are collecting the prayer requests remember it's not a ritual um when it's time when they come to you you can hand over the request if you are yet to write yours you can quickly do that those online following us from whatever nation you can just connect your requests are already there and we're praying the power of god will touch it there too hallelujah praise the lord please i like you to be very intentional i know that most times we do this at the miracle services but be careful lest you make a ritual out of this and then at the same time waste your time i have seen the power and the glory of god um, upon my life and upon this ministry in in ways that that are humbling in ways that are powerful expected testimony please refuse that you're not going back the way you came no matter what the medical situation is remember i told you there is a way in the sea there is a way hallelujah when i do that um we'll finish it and then we can now minister deliverance and just prophesy so that we are able to make time praise the lord father we're gathered tonight by your wisdom and your power lord we're about to minister to those who are sick and lord we trust your power to heal we trust your power to heal to the uttermost in the name of jesus anoint my hands anoint every man and woman of god who will be ministering to the sick let there be the hearing of faith let there be the walking of miracles do this and glorify yourself in the name of jesus christ praise the lord uh, father we give you all the praise let your power flow let miracles begin in this place we give you all the praise we give you all the honor in the name of jesus christ i pray amen please make sure that while you submit your prayer request be in the attitude of prayer if i were you i'll be praying in the spirit don't be distracted just because we are taking our time to pray for the sea god bless deserve the glory and the honor so we lift our hearts and worship as we bless your holy name yes you deserve the glory the honor yes lord we lift our hands and worship as we praise your holy name for you are great you do miracles so oh great yes there is no one else There is no one else like you Yes, you are great And you do miracles so great Oh, there is no one else like you Oh, 
Say after me in the name of Jesus. We are praying now, please. We are praying. Say in the name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that every force from the pit of hell standing against my lifting tonight I challenge you lift your voice and begin to pray everyone lift your voice and begin to pray every force every force nothing will stop your lifting this is a season of lifting in the name of Jesus Set. Every stumble shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. Say in the name of Jesus. Every recurrent pattern in my life right now, I declare you destroyed. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Challenge every recurrent pattern by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Every recurrent pattern in the name of Jesus. Every recurrent pattern. Papo Sabalaka to Pashabren Legadea. In the name of Jesus. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Every dimension of grace apportioned for me tonight. I declare that I must step into it. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Every dimension of grace. Every dimension of grace. Every dimension. Make sure you are praying every dimension, every dimension, every dimension. Say in the name of Jesus, Father, let your fire fall upon my life upon my family and destroy every planting that is not of God lift your voice and pray let your fire the visitation of your fire the visitation of your fire upon my life upon my life pray let your fire fall upon my life let your fire bring a separation lift your hands I'm about to pray for you now we are never doing the same thing every time I rebuke devils there are lives and destinies 
that are under the yokes of darkness it's time for the devil to give up are we together are you ready to shout that name that is above all names let me tell you i want you to be childlike tonight and just follow these instructions and watch the wonder working power of god in your life at the count of three i want you to shout that name jesus everywhere and as you shout that name the sword of the lord will pierce through every root of every challenge and begin to command victory for you are we together now especially for those of you who are coming here for the first time i'm ministering deliverance now every yoke of darkness that has tied anyone's life as you shout this name may the visitation of that fire are you ready now one two three I command the fire, the fire of the Spirit. Bring them up, the fire of the Holy Ghost. Right now, every altar and everything, every high thing that is not of God, I curse you now. I curse you now. I curse you now. hallelujah i think the ground is good enough you can bring them in the name of jesus i'm praying now i'm still praying anyone's destiny that is under siege right now i stretch my hands in the name of jesus i'm seeing i'm seeing like bolts of fire falling on people if it falls on you your destiny is opening up lord where are they i stretch my hands may the visitation of fire Open destinies now. Shake it to katakata. Open destinies now. Open destinies now. Inside, outside. Open destinies now. Open destinies now. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a horn and I'm seeing fire burning it. Please be sensitive. This is a symbol of authorities that sit over lives and families. He said in Zechariah chapter 1 and verse 18, What seest thou? He said, Four horns. These are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Jerusalem, against Judah, so that no man does lift his head. He said, But I have sent four carpenters. Lift your heads. I'm praying right now. In the name of Jesus, the fire of God is falling on people inside and outside. In the name of Jesus, anyone here, Shabo Sekatos Kabariakata under any kind of demonic siege at the count of three that horn that symbol of authority that has tied your family that has tied your life it is uprooted one two three i release that fire now i release that fire now i release that fire now by the anointing of the holy ghost I decree and declare by the anointing of the Holy Ghost anyone here whose life is under siege be delivered now hallelujah the Lord wants to visit the issue of barrenness but then he's using physical barrenness as a prophetic symbol for productivity so that you are not surprised if you are a man and the anointing still visits you the womb is the place where seed is planted that womb can be anything a woman's womb is just a type and a shadow of a system of increase there are people a barren woman is a woman whose womb cannot receive and multiply seed the way it is physically that's how it is spiritually you receive the word but it never produces it's barrenness you receive finances but it never multiplies it's barrenness lift your hands as i pray listen many people many people are going to be delivered from just this prayer you will be surprised to know that many of your requests are tied to this one prayer lift your hands i'm praying now that in the name of jesus ah, i tell you all i see is just fire that's what i'm seeing every spirit responsible for barrenness in anyone's life right now by 
by the fire of the Holy Ghost I declare be delivered now be delivered now be delivered now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost overflow one I'm seeing three people I'm praying now I know because of time we can't let you come in but I'm seeing three people two are ladies one is a gentleman this prayer is for you there is an anointing as I'm speaking that is coming overflow one on people outside the Lord is bringing massive deliverance barrenness is a dangerous thing listen whatever you give a barren person is as well as wasting your time because it cannot grow it cannot multiply Jesus saw the fig tree it was taken from the earth taken from the earth but it was not producing in the name of Jesus I'm still praying that prayer again that any life here that Satan has rendered barren I stand by the anointing of the Holy Ghost and I decree and declare be delivered right now be delivered right now from every siege of barrenness be delivered right now be delivered right now from every siege of barrenness hallelujah Kemi who is Kemi Kemi um, I may not maybe I may just talk to one or two people Kemi you are wearing red it's like it's a guy called Kemi who is that you are wearing red what's your name uh -uh, I didn't I'm saying this is I'm saying I know that Kemi is a lady's name it's not a guy I will pray for you it's your hunger this is you are wearing red what's your name your name is Kemi. Yes, sir. You are wearing red. I'll pray for you. But gentlemen, you are here. There is a hunger that you carry. Listen, you came from ah, uh, I'm seeing Cross River. Where? Yeah? Cross River. Cross River. Cross River. Yes, you sir. came. Yes, sir. The Lord is saying, I should tell you. Listen to me. Yes, sir. You came because of a hunger. Yes, sir. To truly get an anointing. Yes, sir. But you see, this message I preach was for you. You heard what I'm saying? This running around to want to do ministry by force is not the way it works. The Lord Himself, He will give you an anointing, but He will give you direction. What you need is an encounter with the word and direction, but you will never go back the same. Receive that anointing, a new dimension, a new season. My dear, there is a spirit of prophecy upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stir up that spirit, that dimension. I open you to a realm where you begin to see and hear the sounds of the spirit in the name of Jesus as I'm praying this I'm seeing number 11 the same thing that came on this lady the anointing of the spirit is looking for 11 people there is the spirit of prophecy where are they I stretch my hands right now 11 people 11 people scattered inside and outside in the name that is above all names receive that spirit you need it i stir it up from your spirit man i stir it up from your spirit man the grace for prophecy makatos kabarakata sons and daughters stepping into dimensions of prophecy some of you you have only had dreams only dreams but i shift you to dimensions of visions prophetic visions You will never be the same i'm still praying this i'm still praying this there are people this is your call but no anointing has ever stirred it in the name of jesus i shift you in the spirit into that anointing the very anointing the seat of the prophetic i move you by grace in the name of jesus christ i activate it i activate it that dimension I'm praying I don't know why God is moving this way there are people the call of God is upon your life but you don't know it you don't know that the call of God is upon your life but tonight as a token the spirit of God is visiting you whether you know it or not Lord where are they I stretch my hands now if the hand and the mandate of God is upon your life 
for your destiny in the area of the fivefold i declare let the anointing of the spirit locate you as it locates you the lord begins to prepare you where are they receive that grace receive that grace receive that grace hallelujah there is a dangerous spirit our time is up hold on but there is a spirit that i want to rebuke now i just saw written in the air rejection hold on many of you do not know the reason why good things never reach you you stand you are watching and an opportunity come rejection is not just a state it's a spirit lift your hands don't pray don't do anything just lift your hands hallelujah that's the instruction the lord is giving me just lift your hands just do what i'm asking you to do in the name of jesus many of you will be surprised now there are people it's like a yoke i'm seeing like cowries these cowries that they use that's what i'm seeing and in the name of jesus christ as the power of god is smashing that rubbish that's how many people who have been despised been despised the bible says where you have been forsaken so that no man passes through you it says you become an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations right now i stretch my hands from the front to the back overflow one two three the roadside and online if there is anyone here under the siege of the spirit of rejection right now in the name of jesus in this silence may the anointing of the spirit begin to bring deliverance right now i'm praying it's happening right now taking away that spirit from your life please be sensitive we are doing a quick walk rejection 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 by the anointing of the holy ghost rejection i command that spirit to leave i'm still praying i command that spirit to leave i command that spirit to leave alongside with this there are people bad luck good things must always turn to evil when it hold, when it enters your hand no matter what it is if they give you money something must go bad a good opportunity it must be destroyed you enter a relationship something must happen i stretch my hands right now in the name of jesus if there is anyone under the sound of my voice who is under this kind of siege here at this miracle service fire 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 i release the fire of the spirit right now from the front to the back inside outside I command your deliverance right now. I command your deliverance right now. I command your deliverance right now. Keep your hands lifted and pray. Mighty things are happening in the spirit. I ask us to pray a prayer that the Lord put in my heart. Patterns. I'm still seeing it again. There are some of you, the same thing happens to every member of your family at certain seasons everything must happen either somebody dies or someone doesn't marry straight and correct you must have a child before you get married or something someone will rape you someone raped your mother someone will rape some kind of nonsense patterns in the name of jesus at the count of three i want you to shout jesus lord i pray that as your people shout that name every pattern that happened to the fathers that is about to replay itself in the life of your people let it be broken at the count of three one two three i declare those patterns broken now those patterns broken now those patterns broken now those patterns broken now hallelujah the spirit of delay god is taking delay from someone's life that's what i'm seeing god is taking delay i'm seeing it going delay 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 not everybody but i'm seeing god is it will surprise you after this miracle service the kind of speed that your life will enter 
delay. Hallelujah. My dear, come. This come. This is your first time here. Where are you coming from? You're coming from Abuja. Yes, I want to pray for you. You had the prayer I just said we should pray. Yes. That prayer was was for you. Don't be embarrassed. Eh? There is a spirit of delay that must live your life. You are a great lady, but I see delay. Come. It's a demonic spirit. And if you are not delivered and you get up and go to Abuja just like that, it will be as if you did not come before the presence of God. But I lay my hands upon your head. And in the name of Jesus Christ, the spirit of delay, I call you by name. Let this lady go now. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit, go now. Live her life forever. In the name of Jesus. That lady wearing lime cloth, you, this one, come quickly, please. Look at me. Salvation has come to your family. The month of June. Look at me. The month of June, I'm prophesying by the Spirit, is the month for your family. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, He's changing everything. Everything completely by the Spirit of the living God. He's changing everything by the Spirit of the living God. He's changing everything by the Spirit of the living God. I'm hearing a name, Doris. I'm hearing a name Doris. Doris. Who is Doris? I'm hearing a name Doris. Doris. Are you Doris? Your name is Doris. I'm going to pray for you. Your name too is Doris. That's your baby. I will pray for you. Look at me. Look at me. Shout Jesus. My dear look at me witchcraft i'm stretched the lord is just saying i should stretch my hands in front of you i stretch my hands and i declare i'm seeing an altar catching fire in the name of jesus christ i declare it by the spirit i stretch my hands that's what the lord is saying i should do i stretch my hands it catches fire now oh, oh, oh. Say shame and reproach. Shame and reproach is taken from my life. Is taken from my life forever. Forever. Say it again. Shame and reproach. Shame and reproach. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Jesus. Shame and reproach is taken from your life forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, shame and reproach is taken. Hold on, I'm not done with that. I decree and declare that shame and reproach is taken from your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody's father has not been paid for 11 years. I'm seeing, I don't know what the condition is, but I'm seeing at, at 11 years or so your father has not been paid it's something they have been pursuing please make sure you are honest who is that come your dad where is he he's in Lagos you too where is he do you believe that if I pray for you a miracle will happen let's pray father in the name of jesus we make it happen by the spirit of the living god i decree and declare that between now and the next 90 days let there be a miracle let there be a miracle in the name of jesus christ why are you all coming your parents 
no, no. I, if, if I pray, most of you is not is not that word. You are just coming just because you want. It may be related in the name of Jesus. I'm I'm just praying for you. As I'm touching you, you see. Let me let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. You see this touch. You see this touch. Just this touch. You see there is power in it. It's just that we are very carnal people. Do you understand? After service, you can hug me and jump on me. But now, what is on me is what makes this touch different. You see that you can you can have. It is not just a touch. Maybe a touch for jamboree. No, 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 no. You can. I can lay my hands on you, right? And then something can come upon you. I can lay my hands upon you, and then your life will change. Sometimes you see me just speak. And you think it as as i pray like this you see watch your life and see what it becomes are, are you getting what i'm saying now that's 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 the point the word of god that you can't see it does not mean it's not resting on you when it rests on you like a hen over her, her the eggs it will stay there until there is a performance this thing you see is not just power it's authority it's authority there is authority in the spirit it's not just power it's authority are you, are you getting what i'm saying now so it is it is a grace it's a gift that god can give a man he said for i am a man under authority i say to one go it's just that many of us just sit down and we keep watching I, be, the fact that you are here within this vicinity alone let me tell you whether you are inside or outside your life will never never be the same if I never get to touch you, it's just that we are carnal. We are carnal. So we just feel that until you make contact with the man of God, your life will not. No, 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 no. I don't have to give you a word of knowledge. The anointing that you see, this anointing, through words, through words, I can speak to you like this. The word of God carries the anointing. Do you understand? It's not just until maybe you... you make contact and lay hands and some of those things are just psychological it is the power of god as i'm speaking over your life if you believe you will be surprised are we together now yes a miracle service we may not have all the time to minister the way we want to but this word if all i do here is to just come and speak i told you about the creative dimension of prophecy men are made by the prophetic word that is on them what is on you is what compels creation to respond to you in a certain way a man can lay hands on you and not lay anything everybody ministers according to the dimension of his grace my dear this lady looking at me come the lord is saying i should tell you what happened to queen esther in the bible will happen to you I don't know who you are but the lord is saying i should tell you that what happened to adasa queen esther in the bible i release that grace upon you in the name of jesus christ so brothers and sisters i like your heart to be open the if you come here and you are prayed for i lay hands on you and you miss the prophetic sessions you really miss the miracle service you see that you miss the prophetic session help is coming hold on the Lord is showing me something help is coming I'm seeing help is coming that's what the Spirit of God is saying help is coming help is coming help is coming it will surprise you help is coming when God says help is coming it means people are coming men are coming men are coming I'm saying it again men are coming this is a word for somebody help is coming in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord is saying I should prophesy to someone it won't read June it won't read June this is what God is saying I don't even know what I'm saying listen God gave you a word God is saying you will not enter June without that miracle happening and in the name of Jesus Christ whoever that person is I release that word let there be a performance let there be a performance in the name of Jesus Christ let there be a performance I'm seeing I'm seeing a young man that came here 
you you are not based here you came from another city and there is the call of god upon your life but i'm seeing that not only is there a call of god upon your life i'm seeing that there is an anointing mm -mm, i'm not saying you should come out this is there are many people that belong don't worry the anointing will will find you there is an anointing i've not done the impartation yet but there is an anointing that is coming on that gentleman it may spill over to others but it's for one you will go back there is a revival within your territory that has been allocated to you your person in the name of jesus let the anointing of the spirit find that person now You may look ordinary, said the Spirit of God, but when my grace comes upon you, I will do wonders through your life. The Lord is saying you may look ordinary, but when my grace comes upon you. You see, the anointing of the Spirit is the maker of men. It is not about what they want to do. In the name of Jesus, whoever that gentleman is, I bring you into that grace. I bring you into that anointing by the power of the holy spirit the lord is giving somebody a kind of anointing here listen let me describe for you how it will work if you hold someone's hand and pray on an issue it is done that's how the anointing will work if at all you hold someone's hand except you don't hold the hand of the person and pray for that person whoever must carry this anointing i stretch my hands now by the spirit in the name of jesus christ may that anointing be so lavish upon your life you will see strange testimonies as you agree with people they will note you they will note you for commanding results through prayer hallelujah let's pray for finances just allow me we'll round up I, I i i apologize already in advance i will do this very fast god is already visiting his people um there is a grace for finances i will continue to pray this until i see a manifestation of what i've seen in the spirit not only are there people here who are called just people men like um, ejimi that are called into the ministry of kingdom finance there are people who may not be called into that ministry but they are kingdom financiers because of that call and anointing upon their life the holy ghost will shift them in a certain way to grant them access you may look weak you may not have one naira in your pocket but listen i want you to believe me as i pray for you lord jesus where are these people that you are speaking to me about let the grace let the unction that makes for this kind of possibility let it be released upon them in the name of jesus christ let that grace be released upon them help him help him be sensitive gentleman please you would have injured him for nothing be sensitive huh in the name of jesus that grace i called him because the lord said i should minister to him that anointing is upon him i'm still praying there are people i'm seeing like coins being dropped on the hands of people in the spirit this is this is it like a token of that grace that call lord in the name of jesus christ i pray now everywhere in this congregation and outside if you are called into this ministry i declare skopa shalanda sagateko shalat you may not look like it but i release the grace on you may the lord align your understanding about finances may he align your understanding about business in a strange and supernatural way that will cause you to command strange abundance i declare that as a result of this prayer god will connect you to strategic individuals strategic individuals hallelujah there are people here who have please listen we're rounding up there are people here inside outside 
you have what we call the mantle of a savior you may not be the firstborn in your family but all the while a grace has been following you because you represent an altar i'm going to pray right now there are people whether you are young or old if that grace if you are the one that represents the altar of god in your family then it's time for that altar to begin to speak right now in the name of jesus the son of the living god for everyone here you represent the epicenter of the purposes of god in your family i stir up that altar i put fire upon that altar now let it begin to burn that from your secret place you begin to shift things in your family from your secret place you begin to command and manipulate realities from the realm of the spirit i make it so i declare it so in the name of jesus christ hallelujah hallelujah them i know there might be many people this may be the last personal case i'll deal with and then we'll pray there might be many people here with this case but there is a particular woman here you are barren you are a, there's a particular woman not that you are standing for someone you yourself please help them Madam, how long have you been married? 11 years. 11 years, no child. Madam, yes. how long? 7 years. 7 years. Yes. 18 years in total. You are standing here before the people of God because you believe that God can step in. You, madam? 18 years. You've Eight. been barren for how long? 18 years. 18 years. Yes. You? Yes. Madam, will you believe if I tell all three of you that according to the time of life, you will return with your children? No, 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 no. It's not amen. The question is, will you believe? Will you believe it? Madam, where are you coming from? I'm coming from Jushi. Where is that? Jushi at the back of enemies. Where are you coming from, madam? You are coming from Kaduna? Yes, sir. Who is this lady? Are you married? You've been barren too? Yes, sir. You too, madam? Please, if you are not married, don't come out here. If you are coming out for... If you are, if you, if someone you are standing for, just remain there. Please remain. If you are standing for someone, I will pray. But if it is for yourself, madam, you too? Look at me. You are trusting God? How long have you been married? I've been married for like five years, but I have a child, but I've been trying for like three years now. You have a child yes, already? Sir. You yes, just sir. want another one? Yes, sir. It's all right. I'll pray for you. These ones don't have any. The devil is a liar. Madam, don't be embarrassed. You are not standing before. There's nothing to be ashamed of. You too. You too. You are trusting God. How long have you been married? Yes. Two years. No, you you had a child you were even rejoicing and you had a miscarriage yes. when last year last year yes. and from that time this has affected you yes, i have to pray there's something wrong with your stomach yes. the doctor already told you i wouldn't say it in the open but then this is what is killing the baby hold on madam um you had miscarriage not even in tw in 2000 and in 2014 child, uh, that's died what I'm saying. you had a, they had to go and remove the baby yes because the baby died inside pieces, your stomach yes the baby pieces like yes. this inside your stomach yes sir. god is going to give you a child Amen. 
my dear look at me this lady the mercy of God needs to speak for you you, you love Jesus you love Jesus I'll pray for you but you are not in need of child what you need is mercy the mercy of God many of us don't know what the mercy of God is the mercy of God is not for sinners the mercy of God is his dimension that causes him to veto whatever limitation it is to come to help you so when we say mercy it's not just because you have to be a sinner there are certain dimensions of God that are only revealed to you at the platform of his mercy he said thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her yea the set time is come I want to pray and prophesy to all of you and agree with you in the name of Jesus Christ please go back and tell your various husbands that you were prayed for I, I love men I respect husbands but many husbands don't love Jesus they don't know Jesus after their wives return like this and say my husband we just went for a program they don't have what program and they cancel out all of these things it takes two to agree are we together in the name of Jesus Christ madam put your hand in your stomach I take away this demonic thing let it go now in the name of Jesus it disappears madam I pray for you the Lord opens your womb in the name of Jesus madam by the grace of God you carry your child in the name of Jesus Christ I remove every growth from your stomach in the name of Jesus I declare that you return with your miracle madam look at me God is going to use you Amen. you are not just going to give birth to a child the hand of God is on your life it doesn't look like it but there is nothing in this life that will ever satisfy you except the service of God you will love God and serve him and with this miracle God is going to give you every other woman you pray for yes, over sir. the issue of the fruit of the womb Amen, you will sir. see that God will open Amen. up your soul in the name of Jesus Christ father you will arise and have mercy upon this my precious sister in the name of Jesus the voice of accusation that speaks against you I silence it by the mystery of the blood now go and have your child it's over in the name of Jesus Christ it's over my dear look at me go and prepare you have a child now in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit let the grace of God speak for you madam I pray for you help her please it's over right now carry your child in Jesus name please stretch your hands towards the altar and let's pray stretch your hands in one minute you for yourself madam okay in the name of Jesus Christ it's all right madam no problem in the name of Jesus Christ I pray um, you are trusting God for a child in the name of Jesus Christ somebody's sister is going to have twins hold on hold on hold on the power of God will come on that person now as I'm speaking for the sake of your sister carrying twins this is twins the Lord himself hmm. there's one more person left I'm hearing the voice of children babies crying when it stops then I know that it's over I'm still hold on I'm still hearing it there is still one more person family I'm like I'm hearing the voice of children Lord in the name of Jesus wherever that family is I pray that you locate them right now by the Spirit of the Living God you locate them right now you locate them right now I'm still praying you locate them right now in the name of Jesus 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 stretch your hands and let's pray please begin to pray one minute and say father whatever I have dropped here just keep her there I'll pray for her that's all right begin to pray in the spirit and declare that whatever you have dropped here turns to your testimony in the name of Jesus I'm laying hands here and I'm agreeing with you impossible situations 
Mabrakatoza dia shana hasana malakatosh. Rekete kete kebara hasosia. Embrakato shala barakatos kade brende kete kalatosiata. Unto you that answers prayers shall all flesh come. Mabreza gato jane kelando safria hasabadash. Ingre doze de kosha barakatos ki adabalash. Please pray. Lord, turn around our captivities like the streams in the Negev. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, let them say among the hidden, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, whereof we are glad. We sow prayers in tears and we declare that we reap in joy. Lord, I bow my knees to you and I cry, visit your people. 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 Sheketo kato sana malikatosh, embra kato skala baro sabaria katash. Hallelujah. This prayer you see we pray here is a very deep spiritual mystery. It's not a ritual. It's a revelation. Sometimes when I travel and I go, the Lord instructs me to do the same thing there and the amazing testimonies this for me is one of the most thorough ways of ministering to people because this is a summation of the your truest desires because you wrote them by yourself is a representation of your pain and your expectations this is you standing before god through your request and i decree and declare as i stand and step upon this request I declare rise above every challenge in the name of Jesus Christ the same way I'm stepping on this in the name of Jesus that is how you are stepping on every situation I turn every request in this place into your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ hear me some of you it will be like you are dreaming the way you will see doors open in your life in the name of jesus christ every impossible situation represented here i cry to the god who is the god of this ministry that he will arise in power and surprise you for all those who have dropped their request online in the name of jesus christ the same grace that is visiting these requests is visiting their request in the name of jesus by the anointing of the holy spirit let there be miracles in jesus name please lift your hands everyone let me pray for you right now in the name of jesus christ listen you see every ministry let me tell you this it's an uncomfortable truth but it's true every ministry rises and stops at the spiritual level of lifting of the man of god wherever you stop spiritually as a man of god that's where the ministry rises it's impossible to lead a ministry that is higher than your own level of grace and anointing it doesn't work that way it can't work sustainably that means that when the man of god shifts in anointing and rises it means that everyone genuinely committed to that grace and that vision not based on your personal um your personal press but by the implication of connection you should also rise do, do we agree do you believe that yes i have seen the grace and the glory of god and the authority of the kingdom multiply and rise in my life this year like never before and i want to pray for you in the name of jesus right there where you are inside and outside and all those connected wherever you are spiritually i prophesy to you rise and i shift you to a new dimension i shift you to a new dimension you have worked in miracles before but in the name of Jesus, may your hand do wonders. You have taught the word accurately before. But in the name of Jesus, may your tongue from tonight become the pen of a ready writer. 
in the name of Jesus Christ you have handled some level of finances before but I shift you into figures that you have never seen before in the name of Jesus Christ you have experienced favor before but I stand here in the name of Jesus and I declare a new order of favor you have had God before but I program your ears to hear deeper dimensions of the voice of God. I pray for everyone here inside and outside the mantle that causes men to be honorable may that grace come upon you may that grace come upon you in the name of Jesus Christ listen this ministry has never gone up and come down never not once it keeps going from glory to glory I declare let that be the definition of your life from today spiritually financially academically for those who are students I decree and declare the grace for extraordinary excellence I release upon you the grace for extraordinary excellence I release upon you anyone here trusting God for a job a noble job I stretch my hands between now and next miracle service return with your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ and anyone here due for promotion I decree and declare by the finger of God step into a new dimension of promotion the fire that is upon your altar that is the secret of your life the secret of every man's glory is the fire that burns upon his altar when nothing is burning you will just be a talkative for nothing you will read and teach and nothing will happen i pray for you in the name of jesus the mystery that preserves fire upon the altars of men let it work for you let it work for you i found the coals of your prayer life i found the coals of your spiritual life I find the cause of your word life. This is a prayer many people don't desire. I pray for a baptism of spiritual hunger. I say it again, a baptism of spiritual hunger. That the Lord will expand your appetite for spiritual things every kind of arrival mentality every kind of spiritual complacency where there is no imp there is no desire to press for the deeper things of god satisfied by the little results here and there i declare that the lord plants a fresh hunger the hunger that can take you on a three days fast just to study the word and pray in the name of Jesus Christ some of us the grace to fast has died you fast by 10 you are yawning your life away and you can't pray I pray for you now in the name of Jesus the spirit of gluttony and uncontrolled lust for food I curse it from your life in the name of Jesus Christ finally I pray for you in this strange season where God is lifting men and changing their stories as I'm praying for you I'm praying this one for myself too in the name of Jesus may you rise to a level where all those who knew you will turn and say this one is the finger of God in the name of Jesus Christ I'm calling on people who want to surrender their heart to Jesus now. Please, everyone stand. Please, everyone stand. No move. Let me tell you something. One of the assignments of the church is to harvest souls for the kingdom. We must be passionate and desperate and intentional about souls coming to Jesus. Are we together? There are people here who are saying apostle 
if you will lead me to Jesus I'm not too proud I'm not a rebel I can come to him genuinely please listen carefully overflow three overflow two one by the roadside and those who are following online the church is gradually becoming very very unresponsive to the need for salvation you are a man of God here take the issue of the salvation of souls seriously if you are not saving souls as a church you are this in fact is sin it's not just wrong it's not just disobedience it's sin it is important that we continue to partner with the spirit that people come to Jesus it's not just a ritual to show we are spiritual it is the only way that their lives can be salvaged first eternally and then to live a life of victory here are we together there are people here you may have been born from a Christian background a number of you love Jesus Christ but you are saying man of God I have never truly made a commitment for Jesus I have I've seen people do all this but tonight I want to make that decision some of you are saying man of God I love Jesus but I need a renewal in my life I just need a fresh touch I know that my life is not the way it used to be and I want to straighten out my ways with God if you are here and you belong to these two categories aside from overflow three I'll just request for time's sake that you move forward to the front of your projector screen overflow one overflow two the roadside and inside here I want you to come out right where I am here wherever you are God bless you quickly please we have one minute for this wherever you are Jesus is speaking to you you must be born again no one will force you but you have to win this war tonight you have to win this war tonight God bless you quickly come boldly come like one who is coming to receive an award don't come as if you are attending a funeral this is a miracle of miracles God bless you apostle what if people know me and they see me leave all those people this is the business of you and God make your way to the front quickly those coming from outside please let's clear the way for them so that they hurry up let's clear the way for them God bless you God bless you as you come quickly God bless you as you come you need Jesus please don't come out here to pretend come out genuinely from your heart you must be born again every single one of us had to pass through that process Jesus said I am the door not a door the door the door the only door every other route is a, is, is is not correct you have to follow through the door hallelujah thank you so much ladies and gentlemen for coming out to make this declaration i want you to know that this is a very noble declaration lift your right hand after me and say this passionately and truthfully say lord jesus if you're joining them please come quickly join them say lord jesus i love you say it again i love you with all my heart i believe that you are the son of god that you died for me you shed your blood for my sin tonight I receive you I receive your life I as I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that I reign in life in the name of Jesus I move forward ever and backward never the grace to stay the grace to grow the grace to be useful is mine tonight in Jesus name Lord Jesus I stretch my hands towards these precious people they have come before your people making declarations making commitments to live for you to love you to serve you I pray that the grace that makes this a possibility let it be released upon their lives in the name of Jesus I declare your sins forgiven I declare that the power of sin the power of Satan is broken over your life you go from glory to glory in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen I appreciate you I want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands all of you just follow him in concert there will be a group of people to just talk to you address you very quickly and then you will be back to your seat let's appreciate the Lord for tonight
watching us for. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life, that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain 